A letter from the illustrious Warren Starcoat, Master Artificer, Wizard of the First Rank, Initiate of the Circle of Eight, and Lord of the Silvery Manor, to his friend and colleague Alhamazad the Wise. My dear Alhamazad, my expedition to the Great Barrier Peaks continues apace, and I am very close to laying my hands on a piece of the gate at last. Despite your insistence that this line of research is, if I recall your phrasing correctly, a steaming barge load of fermented horseshit. The portents have directed me to a blue stone, set into the cover of an obscure volume of arcane writings, the providence of which I have yet to determine. However, I believe my contacts have discovered its location. It is on display in the library of a nobleman up in the northern reaches of the Duchy of Jeff. I suspect it shouldn't be too difficult to part of it, my skills being what they are. But of course, you don't care about that. What I suspect will interest you, however, is the marvelous beast I spotted as we passed through the wetlands of the Sheldamar Valley, a gigantic, gibbering thing with a quartet of flailing tentacles and a frankly unprecedented configuration of eyeballs. I composed a quick watercolor of it as soon as we reached civilization, and have enclosed it for your perusal. My guide claims to have never seen its like, and thus I am uncertain whether I have discovered a new species, or happened across a creature that has somehow entered our world from the far realm. Either way, it is quite exciting. I think I shall call it a frogamoth. Your appearing colleague, Warren Starcoat, Master Artificer, Wizard of the First Rank, Initiate of the Circle of Eight, and Lord of Silvery Manor. P.S. Have you had any luck with that rod of yours? Or is it still as inanimate as the day I advised you not to buy it? In the city of Greyhawk, five individuals are united by circumstance. A brewer priest, a haunted swordsman, a living relic, a caustic criminal, and a golem without a past. With the drawing of a single card, their lives have been turned upside down. Welcome to the Chimera, a role-playing adventure podcast. Our campaign this season is called Misplaced. It takes place in the venerable setting of Greyhawk, kind of, and we're playing with a modified version of 4th edition Dungeons & Dragons. I'm Vin LeBate, and I play Golden Eye Rakashi, a dragonborn rogue. Joining me today are... I'm Braden Lamb, and I'm playing Balmo, a halfling cleric. I'm Jeffrey Bard, and I play Sir Simeon, the Human Sword Mage. I'm Josh Hallbachner, and I play Ashlar, a Warforged Sorcerer. I'm Casey Smith, and I play Latchkey, a Shardmine with the dual classes of Battlemind and Scion. And I'm Kelly Weissman Aspruth Jackson, the Dungeon Master. Now, let's get started. In combat, so we begin with the, the combat with what the players realized after I told them, yes, it is actually a real D&D monster, is a frog hemoth. So again, this monster uh, is, you know, large. So it's, uh, I think I said it was somewhere on the order of 10 feet tall. Yeah, you said it was 11 um, feet tall. 11, thank you very much, because you just re-listened to the audio. Yeah. Uh, That's with the stock. 11 feet tall with the stock. Uh, sort of a bulbous, slippery, gross shape with four tentacles in addition to the legs, uh, a big toothy maw, and three eyes on a stalk. Oh, and a, a, a really terrible, gross sort of tongue slash additional tentacle with suckers on it. Gross. It's gibbering and sort of making crazy, uh, weird alien noises. Uh, I think we're doing <laughs> that kind of thing. So, we'll begin with the rolling of initiative. Um, if you could just let me know your number. Four. Uh, oh. 24. Jeff, is that with your bonus? That's with my bonus. Okay. I rolled the two. Didn't, didn't turn out that well for you. All right. Well, these things happen. You should have higher than two, though. You should have half your level plus your dex bonus. Yeah, so you got a, you got at least a bonus of three. Oh. A total of 20 for my initiative. So then it's a three. I have a five. Is it just a d20? Uh, you, yeah, just d20. A d20, yes. Plus your initiative modifier, yeah. So much right roll for Josh, who will be joining us momentarily. Uh, 17 um, for me. Let's see, we had a 24 and a 20, right? 
Yep. This is the two highest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that beats both the monster and anything that Josh could credibly get on the basis of the roll. Yeah. So let's just, let, we will start with that. So combat is joined and uh, the, the clear front runner on first move is uh, Rikashi. Now I need to highlight something. Mm -hmm. You may remember that at the end of the last episode, um, Sarsimian marked Rikashi. That's true. As a reminder, uh, being marked means that you are at minus two to hit anybody other than the person who has marked you. This is also true. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Good to know. Well, so here's a follow-up question. Yes. Did So it popped out of the water and gave a terrifying roar that also uh, did some damage. Does yep. that that counts as did that count as a combat turn? No, it was kind of like an opening deal. Okay, so it technically hasn't acted yet. Ah, I see what you mean. You have an yeah, you have an advantage if it hasn't acted yet yep. in combat, right? That's an interesting question. So I think I have to say that it hasn't only because I'm not if that was a combat turn, then you would have gotten I didn't go through the usual rigmarole for surprise, I guess. Mm -hmm. So given that, I think I have to credit it as not having acted yet. Okay, cool. So I have advantage over it you have for the, this you round. Have advantage based, on, based on your ability, yes. Okay. Um, so it's sort of standing in the shallow water. I am going to uh, sort of zip up behind the captain mm -hmm. and sort of like just rush in around it. Um, sort of between the the thing and the ship. Mm -hmm. um, and like Rakashi just sort of does a dash in, comes to a real streaking stop in the sand and like sends a sort of spray of sand and water up and then sort of lurches back in the other direction to uh, come in sort of around and under the tentacles and drive her knife just right into the side of the thing so um looking i just want to highlight something from the map i believe that rikashi has the move the moves to move to where you've placed her yeah but um and this is something i only realized upon like a n3 reading of the of the opportunity attack rules just in the conversation we were having before we started mm -hmm. i believe that that will trigger an opportunity attack because it's not leaving the threatening zone overall. It's leaving any square that is threatened by the monster. You see ah. what I mean? Entering like entering a square is fine. But as soon as you leave any of the threats, even if you leave it for another square that's threatened by the monster, that's leaving a square. Oh, okay. That's true. Hmm. In that case, I misread those rules. But you can shift one square as a minor. Oh, action. wait. Actually, I don't have to worry about that. I don't think anyway. shift and move at the same time. Mm. But I don't have to worry about that because I ignore the first opportunity attack that comes into comes in at me due to a move because I am a rogue. There you go. So you have you have a benefit that allows you to avoid that. But just yeah. for future reference, that is mostly for everybody else, I guess. Just to, to understand that you get you can run up to the enemy. That's fine. But as soon as you start moving around around the enemy, then they get it. They may get a free shot at you. Yep. Okay. Uh, um. So sounds good. All right. So now, so you're. You're running around dodging the tentacles and what else? Uh, just sort of like dipping under and like coming right into the rib cage with both hands, just sort of like okay. bracing the back of the knife and ramming it in. Okay, very good. So uh, I want to remind everybody because we're starting off of this that what we're doing here in terms of um, mostly in terms of attacks, it doesn't only apply to attacks, but it's the place where it's most relevant is that you have static abilities, mostly static abilities that um, sort of make up for the fact that you don't have any at any dailies or encounter powers like you would in normal uh, fourth edition. Static abilities that sort of buff up your uh, list of things that you can do and make sort of most of your attacks better in some way. And on top of that, you can stunt. And so the stunt is basically you get some sort of bonus on the basis of the quality of your description of the action. 
And so I think you, what you've just done here, Vin, is a good example of a level one stunt. You just described with some detail and some flavor what the character is doing. A level two stunt is when you actively involve the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Scenery? Not setting, scenery, thank you. Actually involve the scenery in some way. And a level three stunt is when you do something so cool that the play group in general just sort of by mutual acclaim is like, that's really cool. So it's, it's, it's a, that's probably the most difficult to reach and also the kind of most fluid. And then there's one other thing, I've mentioned this before, but I wanna highlight it again because it may have been missed. We're playing with a special rule in this game, which is that you can get an extra level to a stunt by doing some sort of a brief flashback or divulsion of new information about the character. So like you're 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 taking an action and you're you know using you're using your sword, a little flashback to how did you get that sword, right? Like some some sort of um kind of personal character background is another way. You get you get sort of like a you buff up mm -hmm. one level on the stun. Um, you also Vin, because I remember you asked about this specifically, you can also use that to produce an item that you aren't specifically carrying. Because you'd asked about like, how do we do inventory? Mm. So if you want to produce a, a relevant item that there's no other good reason for why you're carrying, you come up with an explanation for why you're carrying that item, you provide the explanation, and then you have that item. Okay. So um, this is a level one stunt. Uh, you get to pick your bonus from the stunt table. I'm probably just going to take a uh, plus one to damage rank. Okay. We'll do extra damage. Yep. And that, um, so that gives me a second D6, right? That's how that works. Uh, it gives you a second of whatever your weapon damage yeah. is. I don't remember that's whether it's a D8 or D6 or D8. That is a D6 for me at the moment. Gotcha. So um, I should probably roll the hit. That's probably a thing yeah, I want to do. Uh, so that's. Oh, I should probably actually. Um, I'm doing this as a piercing strike. Mm -hmm. uh, which means that it's against reflex instead of armor class. Uh, and I am going to roll it now. Uh, yeah, that is a 27. That's a hit. So that means, and because I have combat advantage because it is the first round and it hasn't acted yet, it is a sneak attack. So I get two D6s and two D8s. There you go. 22. All right, the, um, the blade sinks into the oily, slick, almost gelatinous skin of the monster. Uh, there is a trickle of a milky purple blood out from behind it. And the beast, I mean, it continues to writhe and gibber, but it's hard to say if that's in reaction or just because it's, you know, being noisy and undulating so it's not really clear how much it impacted the creature but you definitely got it in there pretty good awesome. all right uh that was 24 so josh i see you're here i'm here can you hear me okay yep yeah okay great uh we've all rolled initiative yep. so if you could do that for us remember it's uh basically a dex check so it's your dex bonus plus one half your level one. dex plus half my level yep that's, that's, that's right. great, because I have a minus one to dex. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I think I, I guessed right when I said that you he, he weren't going to be able to catch up to 24, so. I indeed could not. <laughs> Ten. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This so is, you still this beat is, Jeff. This is why I was not worried about not being here the instant we started. I knew we would not get to it. <laughs> uh, so the next is, who had the 20? That was Balmo, right? Uh, yeah, that's me. Okay, it is, uh, you're up, Braden. Okay, uh, Balmo was at his cask, uh, drinking his sorrow away, and then there was a tremendous thud, and everybody rushed over. Uh, Balmo took a step towards where everybody else was gathering, mm -hmm. then started hearing the word monster, and he unscrews the, uh, the ornate tap handle that he's plugged into this cask mm -hmm. and starts running over uh, with the with the tap handle uh, swinging like a as th as though it were a mace. Mm -hmm. So he remember was down in the hold of the ship, whereas most of the mm -hmm. people are up on the um, on the deck of the ship. I think that that 
description of the sound carrying still all works. Uh, but so there's a, as we said, there's a hole in the side of the ship through which he can get through. And straight out that hole is where the monster, he can see it once he looks out the hole. It's very obviously there. Yeah. So I think he's going to do his stand. Okay. So removing the tap handle, would you say that's a standard or a minor action? I'll give it to you as a minor action. Okay. So that leaves okay, one, two. Oh, his placement on the ship was Six. was arbitrary. I thought I mentioned that, Brayden. I just I just stuck him oh, up okay. on the deck because we, we don't have a we do not have the, the map does not show two levels. So I just tossed him on the deck to oh, show okay. he's in there. But you have enough move to uh, get to the frog hemoth if you want to. Oh, okay. Uh I will certainly do that. And I'll be right here. Oh, you're moving right up to it. Yeah, probably not flanking it yet. Um but uh that's the yeah. That's that's all the further I'm, I, I want to push the uh, suspense of uh, disbelief on moving around from a, a nebulous spot. Uh, so he runs up to this monster that has crawled out of the sea, mm-hmm. swinging the swinging the the mace and says, "Get thee back to the abyss, <laughs> demon!" And uh, does a priest shield cleric attack. Okay. Uh, that is my weapon plus plus strength damage if I hit. It's strength versus AC. So it's just a okay. straight up uh oh is it um oh but it it's it's not a it's not a weapon attack. It's just a, it's just my strength modifier plus plus d20. Yeah, so and, pretty okay. almost all attacks are your strength modifier plus every attack is is plus half your level, right? Basically you're always mm-hmm. adding half your level to almost any d20 roll you're making. So gotcha. half your level plus some ability modifier. Most weapon attacks are strength, although not always. Most melee weapons are attacks are always uh, strength. Two, three, okay. Um, and then you might have, there should be a proficiency bonus for your weapon. Hmm. I think a mace is plus two, but I could be wrong. That's that's what I have. Yep. Uh, and then there might be some other ability you have that would affect it. And then also this is a level one stunt, so... You know, you can look at the, the table. One of the things you can do is take a plus two to hit. That's one of the things you can get with a stunt. Um, hmm. You can also take the added weapon damage as Vin did. You just run the risk of not hitting and not getting it. Um, hmm. Can I can I add one of these conditions? Uh, you can. Um, priest shield. What's the effect from that? That. Uh, just a prayer and an attack. On a hit, it's uh, one weapon plus strength modifier damage, and you and one adjacent ally gain a plus one bonus to AC until the end of your next turn. Uh, so maybe I should have put Balmo adjacent to an ally. Can I retcon that? Yeah, he's coming out of the ship, so I mean it's okay. easy for him to just stand next to Rikashi. He, Rikashi's right there. So okay. That's fine. She gives him a nod as he turns up. <laughs> so... Uh, can I make it slowed? I think that's a level one thing, right? You, you, you see, or see how the chart works? It's like you need yeah. one level. I yeah. see it there, yeah. So yeah, so you can use your stunt to slow it on a successful hit. Yes. Okay. Go ahead and roll. Hmm. <laughs> uh, looks like a 14 to attack. Oh, that's a swing and a miss. So uh, I'm going to say that the, the blow does connect but it's visibly just sort of bounces back. Like it's okay. This is a a fairly hardy monster. Yeah, did roll a four on the d twenty there. Yeah, it's <laughs> usually hard Fair to enough. hit on a four. It's a credible threat. All right, and that takes us to Latchkey. Okay, so Latchkey had just jumped down from the ship onto the sand, um, mm-hmm. and has a spyglass that they've just sort of tucked into their belt and i think they're gonna um run up to the frog hemoth um it's about like here is that reasonable yep um that's reasonable and uh they're gonna so they kind of have like a sword um basically they've got a sword and a staff across their back at opposite so they're kind of forming an x um and they're gonna pull out their staff and kind of press the end into the sand. And at this point, the um, red crystal on their head is going to start just pulsing 
faster, so it's out of synchrony with the other crystals. Um, mm -hmm. And there's going to be sort of a, a flicker of almost uh, like annoyance or renewed concentration on Latchkey space before they continue. The uh, staff is sort of also crystalline and has a, just a sort of a clear crystal at the top that's going to start glowing uh, pink because Latchkey's pink currently. Um, and they're going to um, angle it so it's sort of pointing towards the um, the frog hemoth. And mm -hmm. they're going to uh, sort of blow on the tip of the uh, staff and there's just going to be kind of a glow that... Um, spreads out from the staff and sort of aims for like the frog hemus uh, eye stalks. And the uh, attack that I'd like to do is the uh, twisted eye battle mind attack. Um, so that was a 16 total, unfortunately. 16 total. Unfortunately, that is also, oh, so this is like a spray of pink energy, you said? Yeah. That spray of pink energy, um, it, connects with the eye stalks mm -hmm. like it, it hits the the leftmost of the three eyes um but it just kind of it disperses off of them like an arrow glinting off of a shield i mean it's very clear that it doesn't uh, seem to do anything other than than that one eye kind of focusing more intently on latchkey sure uh, than it might have seemed to have before there's no other effect from it gotcha okay all uh, right mm -hmm. kelly yes. i um, forgot to mention something during my turn. It's up to you whether or not you want to uh, let me switch this in. Mm -hmm. But uh, I would like to also have marked it because I also have a mark ability uh, that triggers on a melee hit. Yes, I think that, I mean, you did. I, I don't have a problem yeah. with that. Here. I just didn't say yeah, I marked sure. it. So yeah. You've had every opportunity uh, to and nothing has happened that would it, it would have interfered with yet. So it's fine. Yeah. yeah. Also, there's literally nothing else on the field. So <laughs> Right. Yeah. It, presumably uh, the people with marking abilities are going to mark. Yeah. Um, For the listeners at home, uh, because of our weird sphere grid system, I have taken the uh, fighter's marking ability. Yes. So in this in this game, everybody has a sort of a base class, and then they can build. A further advancement is done essentially by taking qualities from other classes and races than they already have. Uh, Casey's character has used that to effectively become two classes at once, uh, but everybody else is a little bit more mixed up and complicated than that. So, it is now the Frog Hemoth's turn. Oh, oh boy. The Frog Hemoth is going to move here. Oh, hi. Uh, okay, but it just triggered an attack of opportunity from me. From everyone. And everyone. So everybody gets a, a free hit, a free chance to strike with a basic attack. And we'll just go in initiative order. So, Vin, you can roll your basic attack. All right. Um... Do I still have combat advantage? Do you still have combat advantage? You were not um, flanking. Um. No, but I had I have first strike advantage um, against any enemy that has not acted yet in the encounter. It's, it's acting by moving, so that would Yeah. Not I'm just not sure if that lingers or not. It shouldn't. Okay. Um... Oh, man, I have no way to get advantage on this thing then. Oh, well. Uh, I guess, yeah, I just uh, straight up knife it. Uh, that's going to be 12 plus 9, 21. Hmm. Is that factoring in your minus 2? Because it's not Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, Ben. Uh, 19. I didn't know if Rockamon was going to come. <laughs> Hey, you're the one who's about to get mauled by a giant frog, so... <laughs> hey, it's marked. Uh, unfortunately, that is a miss. Uh, so the Oof. weapon connects, but again, bounce, glance off. Does not does not even manage to cut the skin. Hmm. Good to know. Okay. Am I up? Uh, yep. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Hey, that's more like it. 24. 24, that is a connect. Woo! You strike true, Brayden. A blam. Now, uh, I, I Brayden, I'm going to guess that this is an aberration, but uh, Balmo is guessing that it's like a demon. Uh, so, Luckily, uh, he has advantage against both of them. So yeah. there's no, there's no, nothing mechanical will tell you which one it is. Right. <laughs> but, but the, um, 
damage. There's like a secondary level of damage for those categories of enemies with my uh, tap handle mace. Yes, the tap the handle mace is a it's an artifact weapon, mm-hmm. which means that all the artifact weapons do an extra d6 of damage per tier. So your first tier, so you get one extra d6, and that effect doubles the extra damage against certain opponents, including demons and aberrations. Mm-hmm. So that's an extra 2d6 on top of the mace damage plus your strength modifier. Right. And I think I've got that calculated in a little macro right here, which I like to call tap the exclamation mark. Oh, nice. I need to do that. 28 plus 2d6 plus 2. 15. Nice. Uh, so you th- the... The front team that's back, such as it is, I mean, the section that doesn't have a mouth, that, that, that's pretty clear, is towards you uh, as, it's, as it mo- lumbers in the direction of Sarsimian. And as it uh, moves, to, moves away from you, tentacles flailing, uh, its exposed rear allows you an opportunity to swing your mace down heavily upon it. And uh, that, that connects. You, you feel something giving way, like a, a crushing of bone underneath all of that jiggly, gelatinous exterior. Uh, And while it, again, doesn't really show much sign of of pain, um, you're satisfied that uh, that that seems to have done something negative to it. Mm -hmm. Bombo says, you know, if a frog had wings, it wouldn't bump its ass on the ground. (laughs) Rukashi looks at him for like two (laughs) seconds involuntarily and then looks back at the thing. Bomo returns Rakashi's glance and hoists his stein up in cheers and salutation. So, Casey, you can also make a uh, basic attack with the staff. Okay, so I think we're just going to go for a, a plain old uh, jab as it passes by. Right, that's right, yeah. that's what it's set up for. Um, so, again, it's a 1d20, and then I don't know what the what would the modifier be for... So basic melee attacks are always strength. It's one okay. of the disadvantages of the of the non strength based melee classes. Sure. Right. Like that, it, it, it's a huge advantage that the battle mind gets to attack with its constitution modifier because right. constitution is so useful in other regards. It's the only class that uses constitution to attack with. Okay. And the drawback is that it's less good at making opportunity attacks. Sure. So there's no modifier then if this if there's no strength modifier. If your if your strength modifier is zero, yeah. then yeah, you don't get a you get no bonus. Okay. Uh, you do get to add your level. Okay. Half your level, uh, and then the the proficiency bonus. So that's four. So four total. Yes. Okay. Uh, twelve. Uh, the jab is unfortunately ill timed and 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 misses the frog human. Uh, they move to poke it sharply with the staff, and it just it's moving so sort of strangely and. Um, almost like in a bizarre dance. So it's not that surprising that it didn't quite connect. Okay, that resolves the opportunity attacks. Now the frog hemoth will take its action. One second. All right. So um, the... Froghemoth has these long tentacles, which are long enough actually to give it reach. So it's able to target not just creatures that are one square away, but it's actually able to target creatures two squares away. It uses those two of those four wriggling tentacles. It reaches out one of its lower left tentacle and scoops up the captain. Uh, The captain, both the captain and the first mate, as I mentioned, uh, have keeled over and and are clearly in terrible pain. There's blood coming out of their ears and eyes from the initial opening attack from the frog Um, It scoops up the captain and just tosses him back, like into its mouth, horks him down in a very grotesque sort of singular swallowing motion. Frog Hemoth is large, but it's not that large. And this is a pretty big guy. It's quite disturbing to watch it <laughs> eat whole uh, an entire person. And it does it so quickly and so easily, it almost... It, it starts to raise a question about, to, in the eye of the observer, like, is it bigger on the inside than it is on the outside? <laughs> um, so it does that with a great deal of ease, and unfortunately, he's not able to put up much of a, of a fight. So other than... Uh, a, a, terrible scream that's eventually snuffed out as his head passes down its gullet, uh, 
there's no other no other effect. So you have a an instant in which to watch that terrible display occur when its top right tentacle reaches out and picks up the second mate, reaches just completely around Sarsimian, which is between it and the first mate, and just grabs the guy and does exactly the same thing. Just scoops him up and and sucks him down. He's a little smaller than the captain, so it it seems to have even less trouble doing that. But again, definitely now it's pushing the envelope of how can you fit two human beings inside that thing with no other distortion of its outside mass. This feels like Um, the setup for some long shaggy dog offensive joke. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not above that, but it's not. You're very much not above that. (laughs) 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 All right. So uh, the frog team is listeners. That is accurate. (laughs) Eaten uh, two NPCs and that Kelly. Yes. Does this thing have teeth? Oh yeah, yeah. It's got it's got a maw of uh, of many many teeth, sort of like a, a shark maybe. If okay. a shark had like so, a... these guys got chewed up. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. No. Yeah. Not like a snake swallowing something, but like. Mm, well, I mean, they got bitten. It didn't really chew because it just it just kind of sucked them down. So like it was okay. kind of like chomp swallow chomp swallow chomp swallow. I mean, it was gory and and it's not like they're like. There's no implication that they're magically floating inside of a, you know, they were swallowed whole and you can cut them out. No, no, no. These guys got eaten. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, okay. That ends the frog he missed turn. Should be Josh next, I think. Uh, n- yes. So a quick, couple quick rapid fire things here. So just double check. So uh, range in a number is just the number of squares, right? Number of squares, it's measured yeah. by corners. Uh, so, well, if you if you're on the diagonal, then yes. okay, yeah. So if I have a range Otherwise, point, I can easily hit him. Oh, I, is there something yeah. in my way from where I am? It looks like uh, there's a hole. You need line of yeah. You need line of sight. So, um, sorry, yeah. I went over. I went over placement with everybody else, but you weren't here for it. So everybody else at this point. Is honestly place. Ash was is not because Ash is down in the hold. Remember, uh, and there's a hole in the side of. So we're looking at a top down view. We're looking at the top deck of the of the ship, and Ash was down in the hold at the time that this thing broke out. So so was Balmo. He rushed out through the hole in the side of the ship. That's there's a hole inside of the ship where there's a little squiggle mark on the mm-hmm. map right now. Um, shows wh- roughly where it is. So um, Ash would need to, if not leave the hold, at least like step out to the hole to get line. It would probably be, be best if Ash could be sort of next to where Balmo okay. is. That'll certainly give him line of sight to the frog okay. unit. And he has plenty of move to do that. That's, that's yeah, not yeah, a problem. Yeah, that's true. But I also have a benefit if I can attack without moving. So I wanted, I wanted uh, yeah, to that... double check if that was possible, but it's not. Uh, that's fine. Not for something he just he can't get line of sight on the frog hemoth from where he is. Okay, so if I I could go like, like here, yeah, okay, um, and so I get a move, a minor, and a uh, a full attack, right? And then anything that anything that's an at will that says an attack, anything any powers that I have that affect an attack, qualify for that, right? Generally, yes. Like it says, if you make an attack roll, that that includes the at will. Okay, so uh, for my minor. I am going to use uh, Iron Mind, so mm-hmm. I gain a plus two bonus to all defenses for me and Balmo since he's adjacent to me. So we each get plus two to all defenses until next turn. Mm-hmm. And then I am going to fire off an Acid Orb. So basically what this looks like is, you know, Ash is going to kind of lumber over to the hole here, you know, get a quick sense for kind of what's going on. That that sigh effect that we saw before is going to go, <laughs> and then the phoenix like tattoo on his chest is going to start glowing brighter and brighter, you know, kind of with the uh, you know the the light of you know like an internal fire. He's going to lift one hand kind of up to it and close his fingers and peel out like uh, something in his hand like the size of like a large stone. That's kind of this like roiling, bubbling, like sphere of liquid that's kind of like hot and steaming and everything. And then he's literally just going to kind of wind up and toss it, uh, 
you know, like a baseball, basically, at right at the, the back of the frog hemoth, uh, mm-hmm. as closely as he can hit it. And so, oh, the last thing I, so my attack is is plus charisma, right? Is there anything else? I don't remember if there's like something related to tier or something that I add to. Uh, or is it just my charisma bonus? It's box? your charisma bonus, and then everything, basically almost all d20 rules are adding, all, all active d20 rules, not some passive ones, are adding half your level. Okay. Right, so, so um, and then I have uh, Oath of Enmity. So uh, I get to make two attack rolls and use the higher one. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, the higher one is only 16. This is against Reflex. Against Reflex. Your charisma bonus is two? Yeah, it's two and then the plus three for the level gotcha. and then the reflex. That... Uh, it's a beautiful windup. And oh, sorry. What is the? You have it's a level one stunt. What what benefit are you taking for the level one stunt? Uh, do you, uh, where's the chart? Hold on, let me find that real quick. Um, is there anything that can make me more likely to hit? I don't remember. You, you can just you can get a, just a, a plus two to hit from it. Yeah, I'll do that. That sounds good. Okay, so that's sixteen plus two. Um, is that? Oh, I have to figure out if this is. It actually really matters if you're flanking him or not. Um, flanking the frog hemoth, rather. You would not think be it has a gender. No, let's see. Yeah, yeah I don't I think you can flank not. at range. Uh, you can. It's mm. just a matter of it's just a matter of the physical relationship between the characters. But I think. Yeah, I think Sarsimian is just well. No, if if he can do it at range, if this is legit, then yeah. I would be flanking. Yeah, yeah, because it, it goes through it's both sides. If you draw sides. a line through the characters, right? Opposite sides. Yeah, you draw a line through the characters. Um, yeah, so it definitely yeah. looks like that would. Yeah. yeah, I think he's flanking. So if he's yeah on a flank, yes, you okay? Sweet. Okay. Um, let me um, just I, I, since since we have a dispute about whether it's flanking or not, let's just take a second, mm-hmm. and I will find the flanking page because I was just looking at it earlier, and it is more complicated than I think I remembered it being. Um. Yeah. Hmm. This this says they have to be adjacent to the enemy in the official book. Yeah, yeah. There's hmm. a feat. That's what it is. You can take feats that, that uh, will let you range right. flank, but I do not have that. Okay. So okay. I, I so unfortunately I that over toss it, it. <laughs> sails over its head, just just a little bit to the right of the eye stalk, uh, and lands past our simian and melts a bunch of sand. All right, it's Sarsimian's turn. All right. Um, Sarsimian is going to, with his free action, mm-hmm. mark this fellow with Guardian Aegis. Or Aegis. I never know. Um, I think it's Aegis. I say Aegis, yeah. Then um, he's going to grab the the handle of his, of Larendanjo. Is that how you mm-hmm. pronounce it? I haven't said it out loud yet. Uh, Larendanjo. Larendanjo. He grabs the handle unsheaths it in kind of one smooth motion, uses the momentum of the the unsheathing to kind of spin himself around, and then launches the sword up into the air, kind of straight above him. Uh, It kind of bursts into this blue-black flame as it continues to rotate above him, and just, it gains a lot of height. He he tosses this thing pretty far. Then he kind of really quickly closes his eyes and makes a fist, disappears from where he's at, reappears right at the apex of where the sword was spinning, grabs the handle again, and kind of uses his momentum of falling to really try and cut one of those eye stalks off. Uh, And as he connects, hopefully, um, a lightning bolt kind of comes out of nowhere, hits Larendenjo, and makes its way into uh, the Frogamoth. Um, And he's using Booming Blade. Okay. Rad. And he has Fey accuracy, so he's going to roll twice for this. Uh, one of those is a 24 against AC. Great. And uh, that's certainly a stunt. What would you like for your stunts? I'll take some damage on that. Yep. Um, so that's going to be 23 damage. Okay. 23 thunder damage, if that matters. If it matters. Okay. Good. Um, so actually that... Well, it doesn't matter. Um, Because thunder damage is different than lightning damage. Yes. Um, 
it's irrelevant in this case because it doesn't have any relevant vulnerabilities or defenses. But, uh, okay, so the sword, so it's, it's both a strike with the sword and with the lightning, right? Is that the idea? It's basically the whole thing is just thunder damage, yeah. so it booms. Okay. And, yeah. Um, well, the blow certainly connects and uh, bloodies the eye, when the, the leftmost uh, eye on the eye stalk. Again, that there's more of that milky purple blood uh, coming out of the creature's body. This time it does seem to like reel a little bit from the wound that there is some, seems to have had some effect uh, in this case. Um, and we come, yep. Uh, I was gonna say, uh, I've also got a feature called Foe Snare. So creatures mm -hmm. that I hit are immobilized until the end of my next turn. Right, I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've pinned it in place, that's good. And, and I just realized something. I have mm -hmm. a, an effect. I thought it was on a successful attack roll, but it's actually just an attack roll. Mm -hmm. If I roll an even number, I get plus three temporary hit points. Oh, that's great. <laughs> what? Yes. Yeah, that, the, the <laughs> sorcerer is crazy. The sorcerer does that, weird things. And so, that's great because I get to roll two attack rolls a turn. <laughs> it's whatever oh, one you keep. Sneaky. Oh, it is? But, yeah, it's no, not, it's, it's not, not just what I roll. No, them. It, that's no. too bad. <laughs> but it does mean, I mean, I will let you, if for some reason you want to keep the less good one because it less the lower number because you want the the even the or the odd for it. Yeah, then I'll certainly let awesome. you take that. That's certainly fine. That's that's still good. So yeah. sweet. Um cool. So you get marked down your bonus hit points. All right. Uh that was pretty successful. Are you done with your turn, Jeff? I am. I'm fish. Okay. Um the various NPCs that are arrayed there on the prow of the ship are mostly just sort of standing uh, aghast. They just watched two people be eaten alive. Um, so they're uh, upset about that and still sort of thinking about how to respond. But at least um, uh, Doldrick and Bechamel are making motions like they're going to try and climb down from the prow of the ship. I mean, it's, it's hard. They got to get over the, the rail and then... Um, sort of make their way down the side of the ship, so it's it's not clear if they're going to be able to join the action immediately. But they're making they're making an effort to do that. You can see that that's underway. Uh, and we'll come back around to Rakashi. Start of round two. Okay, let's try this uh, flashback trick. Yeah. Um, so, cut to a darkened room in the city of Greyhawk. Several large men in black leather armor are standing around a bed restraining a man who seems to have been peacefully asleep. Rakashi is leaning over him, one hand pressing firmly on his mouth, and she leans in and says, Orgnenshen sends his regards and begins to lower her knife down over his eyes. Uh, and on that note, uh, she is going to just charge straight into the thing, plant a foot on its back and sort of like parkour up it to grab the eye stalk and just take a real serious uh hack <laughs> at it <laughs> that's great mm -hmm. that's great are you making an actual charge um i don't is there any mechanical there is a mechanical consequence i'm not sure if it's optimal for you to do it or not. yeah i don't think i'm making a literal charge okay that's fine um, it, I'm disturbed probably... that. Oh, I'm just disturbed that your character has basically an infinite capacity to have special flashback stunts <laughs> about injuring different body parts. <laughs> <relevant to laughs> that I didn't even plan <laughs> that. Um, I'm I'm on board with that. I'm I'm comfortable with that mechanical consequence. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to credit you as a as a level two stunt on this. Uh, because you're essentially using the target-like scenery, mm -hmm. uh, so I think that qualifies. Plus, then you get the bonus for doing the flashback. So you get it's a level three stunt. All nice. right, oh. uh, blow this thing up. So if this works, I'm going to try and use two points of that to make it blinded, mm -hmm. and then the third for a damage rank. I'm going to use precise strike again to uh, hit its. Uh, reflex rather than its armor class since uh, its armor class seems a little high 
and that is a 26. Uh, plus, I've got advantage because it's flanked because Sarsemian's on the other side. Yep. So I'm going to guess that's a hit. It is a hit, yes. This, it was, that was against AC, right? Uh, that was against Reflex. Oh, wow. It, it was really good. Yeah. Okay. So that is 13, 17. 17 damage, and you were going to blind it, yes? Yes. Okay, you successfully um, slice the the two remaining eyes on the eye stalk. So all the eyes are badly damaged and bleeding now. Uh, and the creature rears and, and lurches a little bit. It makes something like an otherworldly howling noise. Um, you've clearly very much upset it. Uh, I assume you're not going to try and linger on its back, right? You're going to go back to sort of standing behind it. Yeah, I'm just going to sort of land where I started out. Yeah, I, I, as, as long as you're doing that, then we don't have to get into any weird things about, like, trying to occupy the square of another opponent. Um, yeah, pass on that. <laughs> All right. That it finish your turn? Uh, Yes. All right. Good show. On to Balmo. All right. Uh, Balmo looks over at, uh, at Ash hoists his stein up, clanks it against his hip, and uh, says, May our coffins be made from a hundred-year teak, and may that tree be planted on Monday next week. And then he charges toward the... Uh... That's dope as fuck. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'll I'm be, giving brain I'll be collecting a, that. A, a poetry book at the end of this, uh, <laughs> yeah. at the end of this campaign. Uh, so he's going to run directly over here, running right through the uh, the the frog hemoth's uh, occupied squares, thanks to his underfoot feet. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, as he's as he's passing, as he's dodging limbs, uh, legs, and tentacles, uh, he's going to hit it with. A, which one is that? Uh, Priest shield again. So that's going to be a regular attack, and then uh, on a on a uh, on a hit, uh, Ash will get a plus one bonus to AC until the end of my next turn. Okay, so uh, certainly um, you got a you got a level one stunt here, no problem. Um, um, I'm gonna do that to hit again. Yeah, I might want to. Ooh, twenty-eight plus two, thirty. Yeah, nice. Damn. Yep. Uh, easily a hit. So roll your damage. That is nineteen damage. All right. Whoa. Very good. Um, the mace blow again connects. You can feel that that like soft rubbery feeling gives way to something of a crunch on the inside uh and the creature's tentacles flail about slightly faster and in a more upset way for a second cool all right latchkey you're up okay so i'm gonna do a brief flashback of uh latchkey sort of uh standing um with their hands resting on a fence and sort of watching a few uh, children in Greyhawk playing this game where one of them is pitching a ball and the other one's kind of whacking it with a stick and they're running around some bases and Latchkey is just (laughs) sort of observing it just goes quietly. Hmm. So on the beach, um, Latchkey is considering the frog hemoth and they're going to raise their staff a bit like a pitcher or like a batter. Um, they're not actually going to approach the frog humans and they're not actually going to swing at the frog humans, but they're going to swing as if they're taking a really hard crack at a ball. Um, and the impact is going to resonate against the, the side of the frog humans. Oh. Um, and uh, the attack that I'm going to do is a force punch. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll see how we'll see how that works. Uh, so I don't know. Is there a, is that like a level one stunt? Level one stunt. Yep. Okay. 
Uh, Actually, it's a level two stun because you described the action and you give us a flashback. So okay. So I guess I think I want to up. I'm going to just try and up damage. Mm-hmm. Would, would that be like a ranged burst or a close burst? Uh, it's just adding. So whatever the damage is, when you add to damage, you just uh, you increase the like a. Okay. Just add to I'll just, plus I'll two. just open this document so I can follow along with you on the animal attack. So you're using force punch, right? Yeah. So it's um, intelligence versus fortitude. Um, okay. Yeah. I have to see what that is. 1d20 plus 3 plus 4, so plus 7. All right. Let's see what happens here. Oh, fuck. Nine. <laughs> this, uh, dice, this dice do not like me. Uh, that ripple of force... Um, Ooh, swing and a miss. Yeah, yeah. It, it 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 heads towards the frog hemoth, um, but it passes through the wriggling tentacles and over the other side, misses Sarsimian, of course, because there's no splash damage sort of stuff in this sure. game. Uh, but it uh, goes rippling off into the distance, and does not connect, unfortunately. Okay. Is that the end of your turn? Yes. Okay. So the frog hemoth's turn. The creature now, uh, oh, yeah, okay. So it's one, two. Creature continues to gibber and to gibber and, uh, and flail, um, sort of turning about, trying to decide where its, uh, where its next attack, where its attack should strike. It sure is marked by me. It sure is marked. And me. Um, actually, you don't, you can, a creature can only be marked uh, one at a time. So whatever the most recent... Actually, that matters. Did you remark it, Vin? Uh, I probably did. Yeah, okay. So th- th- it's important to keep this in mind. You can't have more... No person or being can have more than one mark on them at a time. So whoever's the last to mark it, gotcha. that's who uh, whose mark it has. Um, like dibs. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Uh, so the creature's, um, eyes, though bleeding and, and wounded and it can't, oh, I can't really see. Yeah, that's fine. Can't really see. So it, um, there's like this, this confluence of purple and gray and green light that sort of appears around the eyes at the top of the eye stalk and then pulses out in this rippling pattern of scintillating energy that washes over the beach in an outward circle from where the froghemoth is standing. So the result is, is there a roll for this? Yes. Everybody give me their will defense, please. Did you say everybody? Yeah. Uh, 17. Uh, 20. 18. 19. Uh, minus 16, plus 2 for my ability. Brayden, did you add the plus 2 that you have this turn? Uh, no, I didn't. Okay, so, so that's plus 2. Yeah. Um, yeah, so mine's 18 for this turn. Okay. Um, it sounds to me like... Oh, wait, wait, sorry. Uh, 20. I forgot a bonus. <laughs> that's fine. So, everyone is stunned. As a reminder, the stunned effect, uh, you grant combat advantage, you can't take actions, and you can't flank an enemy. Um, Stun is a bad effect. So, um, the effect washes over uh, you, and the effect on all the characters is a, is a profound disorienting, a confusion of the senses. Um, it causes profound synesthesia, actually, so that... Uh, Suddenly, you're tasting colors and you're hearing smells, and uh, the whole thing is really, really unpleasant. And Raiden, I know you have to go. Let's see. I think. Okay, that will. I think we can keep playing until Braden's character's <laughs> um, yeah. action comes back up. So, Braden, if you need to log off, you can log off. Okay. And we'll we'll finish out to the point where we need Balmo again. Because I think we still have a little bit more time for everybody else, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Okay. We'll use that time. Thanks, Braden. See you soon. Thanks, guys. See you, Braden. Good night, everybody. Bye. Bye. 
All right. So here's so who's going to use their action to knock out Balmo now? So we huh. aren't <laughs> restricted. So here's a question. Yes. Does that would that have counted to trigger my mark? Oh, it absolutely would have. Yes, that's oh, a good right. point. Actually, it's not just it would have triggered your mark. It triggers. Uh, it's a it's a ranged attack. So mm-hmm. everybody gets a everybody who's adjacent gets an opportunity attack, which would include Balmo, which I'll, I'll just roll it for him. It'll be yeah. fine. That's, um, that's before it goes off. Yeah, the, technically it is. I mean, I don't I don't foresee a circumstance where you're going to be able to cancel the effect, but at least you get the hit in before him mm-hmm. for the chance to hit. Okay. All right. Uh, so minus first again, I imagine. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll just follow initiative. So mm-hmm. let me check the numbers for this because they're different from my regular tabs. Ugh, 14. Mm, yeah, 17. Or no, sorry, 16. Because we're flanking. Uh, unfortunately, no. Uh, similarly, uh, I did roll for Balmo and he got a two. So <laughs> that's, that's not adding up <laughs> to a hit. Uh, Sarsimian, though, also gets a attack of opportunity. All right. Uh, I'm going to roll twice. I'm going to use a Blue Flame Blade during this because it's a. can be used as a basic melee attack. Ah. Does that work? Uh, if it can be used as a basic melee attack, then it's a basic melee attack. Yeah. All right, then. Uh, okay, so my best hit... Wait, why is it doing this? Oh, I know why. Oh, I'm not paying attention. 31. Oof. Yeah, that's a hit. And then the damage Ooh. will be... Hang on, let me double check and make sure that's right. Yeah, that's right. This is going to be fire damage. I don't know if it makes a difference. Mm-hmm. Uh, 14 damage. All right, uh, you get in a good strike before it sends out this wave that complete causes complete chaos uh, in your mind and body. So the result of that is that everybody is stunned. And the duration of that stun is it lasts until the creature's next turn. Now, everybody, absolutely everybody on the board is within the area effect of that attack so everybody is stunned including all the npcs that are over here on the ship in fact uh both pechamil and doldrick fall into the water because they were trying to climb over the rail while that went off um and they suddenly lost uh all sense of their surroundings so it's not very good for the people who are on the ship but it means that we just sort of wheel the turn and round three starts and nobody can act and we come back around to initiative 17 and the Froghemoth gets a new action. So I think, yeah, it just makes sense. So Jeff and Vin, what are your armor classes? Mine is 26. 20. Okay. Unless there's any minuses from being stunned. I don't know if that's a thing. Uh, is there a minus from being stunned? I don't think there is. I don't think you so grant com- you grant you grant combat advantage, which okay. means you're plus two. Um, that makes sense. So you, you effectively lose two off of your armor class. Oh, okay. Well, bad news Ooh, for Vin. That doesn't sound good. Uh, the first one. So um, the creature lashes out with two of its tentacles. The first one at Sarsimian, uh, which misses. The second one at Vin, and I am sorry to say I rolled a natural twenty, Vin. Yikes. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Dan. So, to grab D8. Look at that sharp dice. Yeah, <laughs> mostly D6s, unfortunately. Well, I mean, not, it's not bad, but it just. I, I would like it if it was a slightly better variety of dice. 24 damage, Vin. Yikes. The creature flaps you mightily. I am bloodied if that matters to anyone. I think it matters to you. Don't you have something that kicks in when you're bloodied? Oh, yeah, I do. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> it um, makes you better at hitting? It does make me better at hitting. Because I am a dragonborn. Where is it? Yep, plus two bonus to attack rolls when bloodied. And also my healing surges are better. But I don't remember how to spend those. Um... Yeah, basically, to spend a healing surge, you either need to have someone use a healing ability on you or use your second wind, which is ah. 
I think it's a full action or at least a standard action. Mm-hmm. Um, or be in downtime. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. That ends the creature's turn on turn three, right? So basically it stunned everybody, which meant we just sort of ended the turn because there was no one else left to act. We started a new turn. No one was able, able to act other than it, so it acted. And now we're back around to the rest of the turn order. So now it's Ash's turn on turn three. He missed his turn on turn two. Indeed it is. Okay, uh, remind me um, what a close blast looks like. Close blast is basically... Um, the blast is is uh, a square of squares. The length on the side is the number, right? So close blast three is a three by three of squares. And it has to be adjacent to your character. So anywhere that's adjacent, you put that unit there, right? So like uh, on the current grid, uh, close blast three right in front of Ash, say, would, well, it wouldn't hit anything, but it would fill up, uh, you know, a bunch of water and, and a little bit of sand in front of him. So if, if the Frogimuth if was one step over, I could hit with that. Uh, you can place it anywhere that's adjacent to you. It's not clear to me if it can be on the diagonal, but I'm inclined to say yes. So you could you could do it in a way that will hit the frog hemoth. It will just also hit your compatriots, mm-hmm. right? Because you can't. There's no way you can do it and not hit at least um, Rakashi. Yeah, if it was anybody else, I think I would probably go for that. But Rakashi's yeah. already looking in pretty yeah, pretty not bad doing that well. shape here, and it's always square, right? So I can't. There's no way to sneak that around. There the are here. there are things like feats and stuff you can use to mess with it, but yeah, by default, it's always square. Yeah, with the stuff I have, I can make it bigger, but that doesn't actually <laughs> help me particularly here. Um, can you move first? Like, if you change where you are, would that affect? The yeah, that's of- probably that's probably what I have to do. Well, so, you do get a pretty big benefit out of not moving. Yeah. Um. Okay, so um, I guess what he's gonna do is um, so this is this is where the hole in the side of the ship is, and all the stuff that was kind of in here uh, is all kind of smashed, right? Like there's there's like stuff that was like in the ship that's that's broken up and everything, right? Mm-hmm. So do you think I can like find? Is, is there anything that would be like like uh, a wad of cloth or anything? Uh, it's certainly possible. Um... Like, like you just need like a random piece of cloth. Yeah. You know, everything's been sort of tossed around from the collision with the island. Um, I, I have no problem saying, sure, that there's there's some some random cloth within your reach. It's not. I mean, there was a storm, so there should be oil cloth all over the place. That's true. That's true. There's a bunch of stuff down in the hold. Nothing else. There's probably somebody's jacket lying around. I mean, you're all just sort of hanging out in that area. So. Yeah, you know what? I, I think I'm going to, you know, I... Forget about that. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm going to kind of uh, read the situation after I kind of come back to my senses. Um, uh, consider kind of shooting something off from where I am and then decide that I really need to be able to uh, mix it up a little bit more. So I'm going to kind of bend down for just a second and then basically try to leap onto the sand next to it here. As I'm like going through the air, I'm going to kick off my uh, fire pulse ability. So mm-hmm. Basically, while I'm in the air, the wings of the phoenix will kind of flare out and my entire body will catch on, like, you know, bright red fire. Okay. And I'll kind of, like, leave a streak through the air. So I'm going to bounce, uh, land, I guess, right here. And then I'm going to make a burning spray attack, which is an action close blast three. I'm going to make it directly downwards, so it should be able to clip the corner of the frog hemoth here, but... Uh, narrowly avoid Sarsimian here. Thanks. Ah, I see. Yep. Okay. So that's uh, same roll. So oof. Oof. Okay. So 7 and 17 (laughs) versus uh, Reflex. reflex. Uh, Yes, unfortunately it just shrugs that off. (laughs) Jeez. Um, Okay. No no visible effect. The, The fire connects, but it there's no evidence that it makes any impact on the skin of the creature. And I'm, flank- I'm definitely flanking here. I assume that doesn't 
uh, that that is beneficial. But uh, so everybody needs to know. Everybody is when they when they come out of the stun, they're still at minus two to hit. So, oh, so that flanking is just canceling. That. That. Mm. Yeah, and okay. then you um, that a save will end that, and you get one save at the end of every turn. Although you also get a save. Do you hit on the evens or the odds? I get uh, on the odds. Oh, yeah, it's okay. So you get a free save right now, and then you also get one at the end of the turn if it doesn't work. God, that's so cool. Uh, that's just 1d20, right? Uh, 1d20, yeah. You need 11 or better. Or 10 or better. Oh. Sorry. So it, th- does that end your turn? Uh, yes. Then go ahead and make your saving throw for the end of the turn. Oh, oh Jesus. Wow, okay. <laughs> Dice roller is not friendly tonight. <sighs> not, not to me. Okay. Um, and it's Sarsimian. All right. Um, so I'm going to do a flashback here while he's stunned. Um, <laughs> nice. Uh, Sarsimian, uh, he is in a giant field of flowers, kind of softly undulating hills. Uh, the flowers are many different colors that kind of un- undulate the colors of the rainbow as um, kind of like a heartbeat almost. Um He's looking up in the sky, and in the sky is a giant version of Laren Danjo. Mm. And it is kind of hovering there, tip pointed down at him, and it makes this arcanic rune symbol. It kind of cuts it through the air. And then as it finishes the symbol, it catches on for the symbol itself catches on fire. Laren Danjo kind of speeds down towards Sarsimian, pierces him, pierces the ground, and then everything erupts in blue flame. He kind of wakes up with a start, uh, rolls over to his journal and starts scribbling furiously. Um, so back now, as he's coming out of his his stun, he makes that same symbol with his left hand uh, as he's holding there in danger with his right hand, takes the sword, pierces the the symbol, and then kind of lights the, the frogamoth on fire. And it's gonna be another blue flame attack. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a level two stun in total. Uh, 29 is my good hit. Uh, yep, that certainly, that works. Um, I will, uh, I can't remember, am I a leader? Uh, what, what is your, um... I am a leader. Roll? I mean, uh, we're, we're all leaders, aren't we? No, I mean, <laughs> your role, the, the role of your class is that you're a, uh, defender. But in, in terms of the sphere grid... I think oh, it, um, you may already have leader. Yeah, it's possible you already have a leader ability on from the sphere but grid. Yeah. Does that count for the um, the stunt table? Oh, uh, yes, you have access to stuff on the stunt table as long as you have some leader ability. For, okay, cool. Yes. Um, so then I'm going to go ahead and spend both points of that on you or ally gain regen ten, and as sort of the the fire rolls over the frogamoth, oh. it kind of continues on into uh, Rikashi and kind of turns in this sort of gentle, like light healing mist as it flows over him. Um, and he gets regen 10. Her. Her. Her, Her. sorry. Her. Yes. Um, and then the damage for that roll was 21 damage. 21 damage. All right. Well, the the strike is definitely effective. You can see that the, the blue flame is visibly burning into the uh, frog hemoth. And you also just uh, gave a big benefit to Prakashi. Oh, and free yeah. action, I'm going to mark him. Okay, he's marked again. And I'm done. All right, uh, that brings us to the end of the round. So we come back around to Rikashi. Now, regen, I don't remember if that happens at the beginning or the end. Well, it happens on your turn, yep. right? And it's not crucially important if it happens at the beginning or the end, unless you trigger an opportunity attack. So. You're going to get 10 hit points back. Yeah, I'm going to take those now. (laughs) And, uh, oh, uh, by the way, Jeff, make a um, saving throw. I failed it. Okay. Man, bad luck on saving throws. Uh, I think roll 20 rolls low. Um, One more complaint against roll 20. (laughs) So more like like roll 19. (laughs) It's good. I liked it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so this thing is blind. Is it still immobilized? Uh, uh, if I hit, hit it, by yes. Jeff, then yes. Every time you hit it, yes. Every time it hits it, it gets immobilized wow. for a turn. 
Um, Let me keep my mark. Yeah, my mark doesn't seem to be doing us a lot of good. Um, I think it works better when there are more targets. Um, In general, yes. So she's just going to like look the thing up and down in a very irritated fashion, sort of flip the dagger in her fingers once and then twice and then jam it right into a kidney. <laughs> or where you're guessing a kidney might be. Yeah, I've I've stabbed a fair amount of kidneys and a fair amount of creatures before. I think I can I can make a, an educated guess. All right. That's certainly a level one stunt. Uh, and I'm going to call that a precise strike again. So that's versus reflex. Mm -hmm. uh, 14 plus 12, 26. It's a hit. Yay. And that is flanking. That's still flanking, right? We're not messed up on We're that. We're definitely flanking. That's right. We're still flanking. Okay. Uh, so uh, I'm going to take that as a uh, damage rank increase. Mm hmm 24. Ooh, good hit. All right. Well, you definitely feel like you hit something. I'm not going <laughs> to promise you it's a kidney, but it's something. I know what a kidney is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Vin, roll your saving throw. Oh, yeah. 12. You made it. Yay. You're, not long, you're no longer minus two. Yay. Now it's Balmo's turn. Now it's Balmo's turn. So now we've reached the point where we will, we will have to... Uh, uh, close up shop for the evening. We are making good. I think this is probably the That's it this week for the Chimera. Our theme music is Hoof, Heart, and Hiss by Matt Weber. You can find a link to more of Matt's work in the show notes. You can also find us online at thechimera.space or on Twitter and Facebook at ChimeraPod. If you enjoy the show, please consider leaving us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts or just telling your friends. Join us back here in two weeks for the next episode, and thanks for listening.